What's going on guys? Welcome back into Elite Dangerous. Before we get into today's video, I want to first off thank everyone for all of the comments, suggestions, conversations happening in the chat of just the very first day of the video as we're all coming together and learning more about this mining system and have better ways that we can make it more worth our while to actually make it, make it a viable way to actually make some money in the game. A few things were pointed out to me that I want to clarify before we get into this video very quickly. First off, I'd like to thank and Mr. Dr. Grand Reefer brought to my attention, hey man, why don't you use night vision? And in my head, for some reason, I thought that was like a complex system. I don't know why. I thought I needed like a new utility slot or something. And I, honestly, I didn't even know that it existed. Somehow, uh, in my glancing over patch notes and stuff, I just for some reason missed the fact that night vision exists. I hadn't watched any of the live streams of the development, so I just didn't know of certain things. We were on a dark ring during our tutorial video, and I'm very sorry about that, by the way. I still hope that it was you were able to see the important aspects of it with the, with the pulse scan that we had and everything. I don't know how it was for you guys, but for me, there wasn't a key bind automatically set to night vision, so I had to actually go in, find it, and set it. I put it to end because, you know, night vision, but check this out. Look how much easier this is. If you're in the darkness, okay, you've got night vision, and it's fantastic. You can see every asteroid. You can even see the, 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 the tiny chunks that can't even do things with when you get close to them. But if you're doing any mining, even if it's light, please set up night vision and use it so that it gives you an outline of every single asteroid and it will help you not only see better, but crash a lot less and make it look a lot better when you're trying to record a tutorial video for mining. So as I was perusing the comments and learning more from you guys and your wisdom as you shared with us and the others, and as I've spent some more time mining, I realize that if you are newer to the game and you don't have access to a lot of these funds, you may not be able to use the build that I used in the tutorial. I'll show you that exact build and the cost of it, in case you're curious, later. But what we're going to be doing today is going over what I'm going to call some budget builds and kind of like if you wanted to do the game only through mining, a potential building blocks from what ship to go to and kind of potentially go through. Everything I'm about to talk to you about and show you is all my personal opinion. <laughs> It doesn't mean that it's right, it doesn't mean that it's the best idea, and I want your guys' opinion on not only what I'm sharing, but your guys' thoughts on potential budget builds that we could do for those who may not have a ton of money just floating around, but want to get into mining earlier in the game. You see here that we're now in the outfitting screen, and before we get into some actual opinionated budget builds, I want to discuss some overarching theory of mining, just in case that they weren't clear. The only things that you actually need is a way to extract the material, a way to collect the material, a way to refine the material, and then place to store it. Those are the kind of the four main things that you need. So the ideas that I'm going to be sharing today are based on the idea that you may be low on funds, you may have a big ship but not enough money for the insurance cost, and you want to get a small ship that can still make some money. Or you're just like me and you like to mess around in small ships once in a while. So in my personal opinion, the most basic, smallest ship that you should spend any time doing mining in is the Adder. You can use the hauler. It has a size one hard point, just one. But to, in order to make your life easier so you don't have to keep trying to cargo scoop things up. Also, it's assumed that you have a desire to use the new mining systems and do away with the old systems. There are some ways to mine in a cheaper way than what I'm going to show you. However, it requires the old mining ways, which may not be engaging. It may not be what you actually want to experience. So the adder, I've got, I've got notes. I've got these like scribbled notes of like <laughs> costs and things that I kind of just put together last night. If you're going to start the small ship that I suggest, it would be the adder. The adder is going to run you 86,808. For easy maths, we're just going to say 87,000 for the actual ship itself. It's pretty pretty cheap given how much storage and uh, optional internal compartments it has. For the hard points, if we're going bare bones minimum, I wouldn't even use the warhead. I'd honestly just stick with the abrasion blaster and the subsurface missile. Those are both pretty cheap. The blaster's only 9,700 and the subsurface missiles are only 12,600. If you are going to use the abrasion blaster and these subsurface missiles, you're going to need a pulse wave analyzer. Now, a pulse wave analyzer is actually, the cheap one is only 1300 or 13,500. Um, the only difference that I'm seeing is that it has a lot more power draw <laughs> and it's the range, okay? But if you're going on a budget, you don't need a lot of range. You're willing to keep flying until your little yellow asteroid shows up. 
I left the core internals exactly the ways they came in order to save a lot of money. If you really wanted to, you could potentially spring for the upgraded thrusters to try to help make maneuvering a little bit easier so you can dodge those asteroids better. And for our optional compartments, you can see that I have the two size threes as cargo racks. That's going to give you 16 tons. It's not very much, but given the price of the ship, it's actually not that bad. So you're going to need a decent refinery. Not the best, but a decent one. The reason I went with the size two and the C is because it has a four bin count. If you were to go with the 2D with only three or even the, the 2E with just the two, you're going to find yourself finding probably four resources and having to dump a lot. You'll be wasting a lot of resources that way. Oh, we have to go back and pick it up. So for this build, I would suggest going with minimum the 2C. As you're looking at this, you're going to notice, wait, Scabbard, where's your shield? In the overarching theory of it, shields aren't needed. They're technically a want. They make life easy. They're a quality of life improvement. Without a shield, though, collecting things with the cargo scoop is very difficult. Even if they're completely stationary, if you're very careful, the ship's cargo scoop is so small that you'll find yourself just slapping the material with just like the very bottom of the nose of your ship and it's going to do damage to your hull and you're going to just gathering three little pieces, you're going to be at 85% hull strength. In order to save yourself that grief, I highly suggest you get a collector limpet controller. And of course, a prospecting limpet controller makes life way easier, saves you a lot of time, and allows you to see the subsurface deposits and the surface deposits. You're also going to notice that we don't have a detailed surface scanner. If you remember, the detailed surface scanner's role is to show us where hotspots are. Hotspots are only really applicable if you are hoping to find asteroids to explode and get the stuff inside. Plus, that device alone is 250,000. So for this budget build, it doesn't work into the plan. For easy maths, we're gonna round and say that if you were gonna use this build, it's going to cost you about 265,000 space bucks. Now, this is assumed that you're not using the warhead launcher, that you're not getting the scanner to see where the hotspots are. These prices are assuming that you're buying the ship outright and it's not taking into account any kind of exchanging of hardware. This is just the, the, the blanket cost, so it may be a tiny bit less. However, you want to always plan for insurance just in case you ram into an asteroid going too fast or you try to make a new hole entryway into the orbital station. So again, your mileage may vary, but this will give you an idea of kind of what you need to shoot for. Let's say you've spent some time, you've made some money with either mining, other missions and stuff, and you don't want to worry about that budget budget build. So for the next step up, in my personal opinion, it's going to be the Cobra Mark III. That's going to run you about 350,000 space bucks. Now, if you have the Cobra Mark IV, or you'd prefer a little bit of a bigger ship, you could spring, I think it's more, I think it's about double the price, but you could get a Cobra Mark IV for double that price, maybe about 750. However, the overarching theory of how we're going to build this is about the same. And hopefully you can take this and actually build your own stuff depending on what you have to make it much more affordable for you. So let's say you wanted to upgrade your ship, but you weren't quite ready to spring for the extra 450000 it's going to cost you to have the detailed surface scanner or the warhead launcher. If that's the case, you're going to have the abrasion blaster, subsurface displacement missile, just the same as before. You, of course, can have a pulse wave analyzer, and you could just stick with the cheapest one still. Again, the only difference is the range that it scans. If you had a couple extra bucks, you could spring for the, the bigger ones to make your life just a little bit easier. So I put in two size 4 cargo racks. That's going to give you 32 cargo total. It's not much, but it's better than your 16 that you had in the adder. We, of course, need a refinery, and I ended up going with the 4D for this. Just that one extra bin from that 4, 4E to the 4D, I think, is going to be worth your while just to kind of save a little bit of headache. You're going to notice that we don't have shields still. Again, shields are a quality life improvement and not necessary for this kind of work. So we have a collector Olympic controller, we have a prospector Olympic controller, and if you decided not to go with a detailed surface scanner, you could potentially put a shield on here. Assuming you were going to go with the bare minimum and not spring for the seismic launcher with a detailed surface scanner, you could get away with buying this for just over 675,000 space bucks. If you wanted to have just a seismic launcher, so if you find one just in case, you can blow it up, make some money, it's gonna cost you 827,000. So if you decided to spring for the detailed surface scanner and get on the low end of making all that good money, blowing up asteroids and stuff, that's gonna run you about 910,000. So basically a million. Plus, if you had an insurance cost, you can see the insurance cost on this ship is 55,000. So you don't have to have too much, but you have to have some. All right, so you've made some big bucks. 
being a miner, using whatever ship you've been using in the past, and maybe you want to get an Asp Explorer or you already have an Asp Explorer, uh, I want to go through the cost of the build that I use, and I kind of made a couple small changes, but I want to show you that because this honestly is the, like, if I if you never had to move out of this ship to mine, you could easily mine in this ship for a very long time. The Asp Explorer is going to cost you just over 6 million, so 6.6 .6 million. For the hard points, if we're doing only mining, you could put um, some blasters here if you wanted to, but I went for the seismic charge launcher, the subsurface displacement missile, and of course the abrasion blaster. You have all three of the new tools. We ended up going with the high tier pulse wave analyzer. It's going to give you that 24,000 meters of scan. We're going to give you that size 6 and a size 5 cargo rack. We're going to give you a size 3C refinery. It's got six bins. If you wanted to, you could up that to the A, but the cost from the C to the A is just, it's a lot. There is some space on here for the shield that we had. I use a bi-weave just because it's cheaper and it just charges pretty much instantly on this size of ship. Now I decided to go with the larger collector limpet controller and the smaller prospector limpet controller. Just a fun fact, these limpet controllers don't have a size 2. There's only a size 1 and a size 3 and I'm, there may be a size 5 but I've honestly never needed one. I'm actually not sure. I've never looked at it. So I ended up going with the size 3 collector limpet so I could have two collector limpets doing their thing to save me a lot of time and then one Prospector Limpet because I'm only going to be looking at one asteroid at a time. And of course we have a detailed surface scanner to allow us to find those hot spots to really try to make some money blowing up some asteroids. So if you're going to kit out an Asp Explorer just like this, it's going to cost you just over 9.1 million space bucks. Again, all of these prices are assuming that you're not trading anything in, assuming that you're not exchanging any of the modules. You could and it will save you some money. The insurance cost on this ship is a little bit higher than your ship's going to be because I've actually upgraded a lot of the core internals. This is an older ship. I've got A-rated and some modified stuff in here that actually increases the cost of the ship. Anyway, there's all sorts of small changes you could make to make these things a little bit more your style. Maybe you don't even want to mess with the abrasion blast or the subsurface missile. All you want to do is just blow up asteroids. You could just run a full warhead build. Honestly, that's the biggest cost is the warhead build. The abrasion blast and the subsurface missiles are so cheap that that's the easiest way to get started into it. However, again, the real goal is to blow up some asteroids because that's where the real money's at. So I'm not sure if this information was helpful. I'm not sure if anyone wanted to even hear about this. However, I hope some part of this was helpful to help you understand the overarching theory and potentially give you some information that could push you on to build your own builds that would be more your style and how you want to do things. One of the things I love about the Elite Dangerous community is that there are people that are so intelligent and knowledgeable of all the systems in the, in the game and things that could make things even easier and better. So if you have any tips, tricks, insights, things that I could potentially change on these to help not only me, but help the others potentially looking for some budget builds or just ideas of how to build a mining ship, please share those insights in the comments below. And if you have any questions, I will do the best I can to answer them. I may not be the smartest individual about this game. However, I have a very fun time playing it and I enjoy it. At the end of the day, with Elite Dangerous, the whole point is to do what you want to do. If you want to do bounty hunting, go do bounty hunting. If you want to do trading, do some trading. If you want to go be a pirate and go blow some stuff up, there are ways you can do that. In case you didn't know, I do most of my work over on twitch.tv slash scabbard, link in the description. If you want to come hang out with us live while we're playing a variety of games, feel free to come party with us. If you want to join our Discord, send me some DMs, link will be in the description as well. Anyway, that's enough ranting for me. Thank you all so much for watching. If you liked the video, throw a like down. If you dislike, throw a dislike down. But no matter what, guys, till next time, we'll see you later.